And we are joined now up here in the booth by Mike Hargrove, who really is a legend yeah. here in Cleveland. <laughs> and we appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. It's awesome to have you here. And, you know, it's funny. When, when we found out we were going to have you here in the booth, my mind immediately went back to those teams in the 90s watching the greatness. And for me, I thought about Omar Vizquel, Robbie Alomar up the middle. And I just want to know what it was like to watch those two every day for you. Well, very few times would I go out and make a special effort to watch somebody take ground balls like before the game or in spring training. And uh, two or three times a week that I would make a special effort to get out just to watch these two guys take ground balls. Yeah, they take their own ground balls and then they'd start working on the double play. Uh, at, at second base, and, and after they got all the work done, they started flipping balls behind their back, and, and they did things you think, how the hell did they do that? And, and it was fun to watch. It really was fun to watch, and they were so good. You know, it, it's like Omar and Short and, and Robbie at second base was, uh, you know, two Hall of Fame guys. Now, of course, Francisco Lindor here at short for the Indians, carrying on that tradition that Omar Vizquel basically started. The new pitcher in the game is Zach McAllister here for the Indians, taking over for Nick Goody in the sixth. McAllister, 24 and two thirds, 31 strikeouts, 12 walks, a 3.28 ERA. 4 2 White Sox leading the Indians. And Smith fouls it back. So you talk about those guys. This is what it all looked like. I mean, they were magicians. They made really hard, difficult plays look easy. And that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of a mark of a, of a, of a pro that would say uh, they make the, the hard stuff look easy. Two balls and two strikes here to Smith. And McAllister has to do a reset. <laughs> <laughs> Second thoughts. <laughs> that's not always a good thing, is it? <laughs> I guess it's better than throwing it without conviction. Yes. Just back off the mound. Justin, I thought you were going to first thing that came to mind was Mike's playing days in Cleveland at the old municipal stadium. Some things aren't funny. <laughs> <laughs> I bring that up because really you helped usher in a great renaissance here, not just in the ballpark, but the city of Cleveland. To me in the 90s, I remember coming here as the first time that I really remembered an entire city where everybody was wearing memorabilia or paraphernalia from the team. Jerseys, hats, jackets. It was like a college town here in Cleveland. <laughs> it was, yeah. Well, talk about that bond that you guys established, the sellouts every night, year after year. Well, you know, it was kind of the perfect storm for us that, uh, you know, the Browns had left town and, and gone to Baltimore. The, you know, the Cavs were not playing real well at the time. And, and it's the first time in really in 40 years that the, you know, the Indians could take pride in what they, what they do and, and or what they were doing. And everybody bought in. It wasn't just an overnight thing. I mean, it, it, you know, we didn't start selling out till I want to, you know, I don't know the exact date, but I want to say midway through the 94 season or even the 95 season. Uh, you know, people, you had to convince people that, that what we had here was a special thing and was, and, and was, they were fun to watch. I think we had something like 27 come from behind wins in 95. Hmm. And, and uh, you know, we were 13 and 0 in extra inning games that year. I mean, a lot of good things happened, a lot of magical things happened here. Uh, and the people bought into it, and uh, it was it was a blast to to watch and be a part of. You know, I tell people tell me all the time, you like, we I had, I had a great time watching your teams, and you did this, and I thank you for so many good memories. And I said, you know what, as much fun as you had, I had a lot more fun. <laughs> now I didn't have a lot of fun while it was going on, but looking <laughs> back on it, it was it was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, they uh, there were times that uh, I'd come home like in the in, in the postseason of '95. I would come home, you know, in the evening after the in the evening, early morning after the games, <laughs> and uh, there'd be uh, there'd be yard signs, just my front yard covered with, you know, red and red and blue balloons, and and um, so I, you know I spent a lot of time cleaning my yard, <laughs> but it was it was a lot of fun, it really was. Yeah, those teams. I mean, just thinking back on them, just star after star after star, the lineups that you would put out there. I mean. How much fun was it just to kind of write the lineup up every day? You know, I've got you know the working lineups they have the lineup cards, the big cards they had in, in the dugouts. I had I have two at home in my basement and I have them framed. One of them has uh, Jim Tomey hitting eight and Manny Ramirez hitting nine, <laughs> and the next day it has. <laughs> and Mir that's not an all-star no, game. No, no. <laughs> Ramirez hitting eight and Tomey hitting nine. Of course, it was their, you know they were young players then. Wow. But uh, 
But, you know, we settled in to, to where we, you know, we had Paul Sorrento playing first base for him hit, and hitting ninth. Uh, and, and Paulie had, you know, 20 plus home runs that year. Probably the most memorable game other than, than when we clinched our, the, the first division title in 95. The most memorable game, we were playing Toronto here, and David Cohn at that time was probably the best pitcher right. in baseball, was on the mound, and we fell behind 8 nothing, like in the second or third inning. And we won it with a home run in the ninth inning, 10-8. So wow. I mean, that was, they just they never quit. They just kept coming at you. You talk to other pitchers from other teams and other managers and you know, it's like they didn't know they they, they didn't know who they, they really wanted to pitch to and who to pitch around. You got Albert Bell hitting four and and uh, and uh, Eddie Murray hitting five and you know, <laughs> you got Tommy six and Ramirez, you know, it's just you know, you have to pick your poison and, and every one of them could, could burn you in a heartbeat and they did. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Of all those guys you mentioned, who was the one guy that you said, this the best guy that I managed? Best pure player you managed? You mean attitude, everything? Just, the whole just package, baseball player. Just a baseball player. Yep. The best I ever managed. Gosh, that's hard to say. Um, you know, I'm going to throw a ring around. I'm going to tell you Adrian Beltre. Adrian Beltre? You know, yeah, Adrian Beltre. Wow. That's a very good answer. Yeah. Wow, I was Future not Hall expecting Famer. that. Well, Mike. We appreciate you stopping by. I would talk to you for a lot longer because this is awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank appreciate you. it.